welcome to the Fleet Geeks podcast. We're here to help develop fleet and transport professionals. Do you want to progress and develop your skills and knowledge? We promise to bring lively conversation and debate around interesting issues and keep you bang up to date with changes in our awesome industry. The Fleet Geeks are a community of professionals and if you enjoy the podcast, why not join the discussion for free in the Fleet Geek community over on Facebook? It's three of us again, it's amazing. Whoa. It's Friday and I feel really, really happy. Well, it's Friday, we're recording it. You might not be listening on a Friday and not have that Friday feeling. But I've got the Friday feeling. Uh, it's Friday afternoon and we're all together, all three of us, amazing. Well, you can have that Friday feeling any time of the week by listening to this at any time of the week then, can't you? That's the bonus. That's great sounds pitch. Great yeah, sounds pitch. Love, yeah. Love that, Love mm. that. Uh, cool, so yeah, the three of us all together. Mike's off the back of how, how many weeks of Transport Manager CPC training? Well, it's doing, five mate? weeks, two cohorts. Two cohorts, five weeks. Oh, how many? Uh, about thirty-five, and 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 they they are uh, again as it, you know. It, it, unfortunately, it's, it puts a time frame, a time stamp on this, but they are as we speak. Uh, sitting their uh, sitting their exam, so all the very best of luck to them yeah. this afternoon, and don't phone me if it goes wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. What have you been up to, Jamie, since the last time we caught up, mate? Oh, I've been with uh, various customers, uh, consultancy work, with well, all consultancy work actually. I've not done much training since we last met. I think you I haven't, did. have you? No, I haven't. No, I've uh, been a bit quiet on the training stuff. Um, I did do a manual handling course, actually. I think that yes. was last Friday. Last that's, Friday that's you about did a manual it, yeah. handling course, yeah. Uh, but yeah, mainly consultancy work with uh, different customers. That same customer, uh, I shan't mention names, but that same customer you did the manual handling course for have had a couple of guys fall from height. So oh, okay. uh, I think we're going to be doing a little bit of fall from height training soon. Well, I'm glad you didn't say pull them, pull them back <laughs> <laughs> since, since I spoke to them last Friday. Yeah. And that's not our only customer. We do have more that's customers. Than that yeah, we, do, customer. we do have lots of customers. I've had a really interesting new one come on board. Uh, where uh, uh, one of our uh, one of our competitors has been working with them, but I'm not going to say too much more yet. But we're going to be going in and doing an order. Uh, yeah, stuff. Yeah, interesting, interesting stuff. So, um, where are we going to go with this? Right, Mr. Pete White, who was a, an amazing guest actually, and I really recommend this podcast to you. That, that one of the half dozen things. It's one of my most popular episodes that I did on a half dozen things. I had a guy called Pete White on. I'm not sure if either of you have listened or come across Pete White. Not yet. He is somewhat of an enigma uh, on Facebook. They've amassed something like, I think, 80,000 Facebook followers. Wow. I think I do see it. Is it just White's Transport? White's Transport yeah, Services. I, I see, yeah, yeah. And Pete, quite Pete, vocal. Pete White's the guy behind it. He's absolute hilarious. Got a, a wicked sense of humour. Uh, and they are, they, they do European work, meat, meat transport, basically, oh, taking wow. carcasses on the back of trailers and bits and pieces, right? Uh, fantastic chat, really funny. Recommend the Half Dozen Thing podcast to, to listen to. But yeah, he's uh, he's come across, I can't remember which services it was. It's on the Facebook post. Um, but he's uh, he's put a post up around uh, one, of the, one of the core uh, services has said, 9 p.m. onwards, you have to turn your refrigerated trailer off. Oh, wow. Uh, because it's obviously disturbing other sleeping truckers. And uh, it's caused somewhat of a campaign against, uh, you know, essentially refrigerated truck lives matters, apparently, <laughs> is, uh, yeah. is the post that we're, uh, we're talking about. So I, I, I just thought we'd pose it, you know, as a question. And Jay, you've got a bit of a bit of a story for us, mate. Yeah, I, I did a bit of fridge work when I first passed my class one. I was like a, a naive 21-year-old. Um, the days before training was the norm, I turned up at this place early morning. I only did it part-time. I was working in the garage at the time. And, uh, yeah, given the keys to this, uh, uh, I won't tell you which other company it was, but uh, a fridge vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> so I take a, when I eventually found which trailer I had to take, I was on my way to the uh, site when I realised the, the noise of the fridge had turned off. So I pulled over, pushing buttons, because no one had shown me how to work it. It just fired up again after a while. <laughs> Back in the truck, driving again, it, it cuts off again. I was like, oh, no, it's gone off again. I can't, you know. I didn't know that they went on and off. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling over, thinking that was the norm. But yeah, interesting subject about how annoying it is. I've also been a driver and had fridge lorries parked next to me. And I can sleep anywhere, to be honest. It doesn't bother me, but I, I can imagine that some people do get quite aggrieved with it. And a lot yeah. of services used to have a, a special area, some of the truck stops, for yeah. fridges. Yeah, Is that not right. a thing anymore? Well, I don't know. Space. And, and, and that's what, I, you know, I'd ask the question. I, I, I've got a bit of a funny story, actually. So I've been recording a podcast before at our old offices uh, in Woodston in Peterborough. A lot, of, a lot of truckers will probably know the area, to be fair, because Maxwell Road in Woodston is... There's always trucks there's always parked truck, up yeah, over, yeah. overnight down there. Yeah. 
Hi, it's Pete from Flagship Partners. We're really proud to sponsor the Fleet Geeks podcast. Flagship Partners offer a range of consultancy and training services to ensure that our customers remain compliant and have the best possible knowledge to be able to fulfil their work. If you're interested in support with any of our safety, HR or compliance services, or you want to train to be a transport manager or need driver CPC training, give us a call today. Uh, we'd often get uh, drivers because it, it, it's a free spot. It's fairly quiet. You're yeah. pretty safe down there. It's um, you know it's, it's a yeah. bit off the beaten track where we were based, and it was right opposite the the big layby was right opposite our offices. And in the heat of summer, obviously the fridge is going, going like the it's clappers, going, off, yeah, going yeah. off like the clappers. And I've got the windows wide open because oh, no. we have no air conditioning, yeah, it, yeah. and I'm trying to record a bloody podcast interview, and all you can hear in the background oh. is <laughs> <laughs> shut that bloody reefer off. Uh, so yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so I don't know. What, what, what do you think, really? It's, they've got to be on, right? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to confess now. Now that uh, the only thing I know about fridges is, is where the milk's kept, um, <laughs> and that, that's my sort of limit. Right, right. I, I do, office. I do know about service stations though, because I'm a bit of a geek with service stations. But and that's got me thinking now: is that correct about the the separate parking areas? I don't know. Is, is the honest answer? A couple of the ones I stopped in did have yeah. separate. Yeah, like Alcanby. Uh, not that I ever stopped in Alcombe, but I went in there for fuel. They used to have a separate park. Because that kind fridges. of is a truck stop as opposed to a service station. Yeah. So I guess they know the score. But um, in, th- Interestingly as well, I remember Tesco. I worked for Tesco as well. And um, they used to have they used to plug theirs in on the electric. Electric, yeah. So that, that would be an answer. I know, but then someone's got to pay for the electric, obviously. Because they don't have to run on the donkey engine overnight. But it's, it's obviously in a, in a services or a uh, in a truck stop, that would be viable. But in a lay it obviously wouldn't, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, ultimately... I know as a consumer, I don't want to get the shits no. from my food, right? No, no absolutely. Definitely. And if it, if it means the odd, odd person having a bit of a disturbed night's sleep, well, I guess the other thing, but then on the other hand, I don't want to disturb night's sleep trucker running my kids over. So it, yeah. <laughs> there, there is a bit of an issue there, I suppose. But We need to start know. selling earplugs to truckers. Yeah, yeah earplugs nice. to truckers. Fleet geeks, ear, <laughs> yeah, earplugs. Yeah, branded earplugs. But yeah. that would be interesting to hear from, from people on, on, on that subject, wouldn't it? I, I just imagine that fridges nowadays were a lot quieter than they used to be. Yeah. I certainly remember the old fridges were noisy, but whether they're a lot quieter than they used to be or whether that's still a problem. I, until you raised it there, Pete, I didn't appreciate that it was a problem still, but it, it must be, yeah. Was it Was it even a thing? Yeah, so uh, I think I, I, I sympathise, you know, I, and I see why Pete White's raised it because it's obviously a little bit uh, controversial. And, um, you know, I think... Uh, the fridges have got to be on, right? The, the, the food's got, got to be, be maintained. Yeah, There's be maintained. That, tens of thousands of quids worth of food on the back of the trailer. It's yeah. got to be. It's got to be right, isn't it? Yeah. And as a driver, I could put up with a fridge ticking over. It's when a, when a truck's next to you with its engine running for no apparent reason as well. Is uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no reason for There's that. No need, whereas a, no whereas need a fridge, for it now, is a, uh, a fridge like you say, I don't want. I don't want food uh, to make me bad the next day when I've ate it too. No, yeah, exactly. I'd, I'm all for the uh, the fridge running. Yeah, yeah, I think the, the solution's got to be, you know, that, let's look at it objectively. The, you've got to, you've got to move, move, haven't you? You've got to have a separate location for the for the yeah, just down the way. Not so. always easy is it space. Space but, is a premium, but yeah. it's only design, isn't it? It's just making sure it's designed to yeah. to ensure that there's 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 a difference, um, a different space, I guess. I don't know what other solutions there are. Mm-hmm. I think I think let's put it out to the listeners. Are there the any other electric solutions? Electric fridges will be electric a thing, I'm fridges. sure. I thought, yeah, there's probably I'm sure that's in the pipeline, if not already. <laughs> probably not towered. already, yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, eventually you can run electric vehicles. The fridges can't You can't just have a diesel engine just no. for the fridges, can you? But, uh, Charging your truck up off the fridge. <laughs> and Yeah, and of course, uh, yeah, that's a gap in my knowledge. So, well, I think I'm right in saying, of course, that... Um, Red diesel is no longer a thing. We know really? that, but uh, so the f- I'm guessing it's costing more money to run fridges it's as well. Going to cost some more money. Yeah, going to yeah. cost some more money. Yeah, so again, that's something that might have an impact on on fuel prices. I'm guessing because yeah, I don't yeah. know how much they use, but well, it, it might it may also accelerate the choice of alternative options as well. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So it'll accelerate that choice as well. Excellent. Well, if you're yeah, a, yeah. if you're a fridge trailer driver, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, what stories have you got to share? Have you been told to switch it off? Uh, have you had spoiled food off the back of it? What's the score? Pete White, if you're listening, give us a shout. We'd love to have you on the podcast. Oh, I've just been up to one of our other customers. Actually, I should have never thought that that's what they do. They're into fridges and I never thought to ask them. So there's another avenue to explore. Yeah, perfect. Right then. Thank you very much for listening. You Catch you soon. Bye.
I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please share with your friends and colleagues too. Join us for free on Facebook with the Fleet Geeks community for transport and fleet managers. Fleet Geeks offers ongoing professional development, networking and mentoring too. So get in touch with me, Pete Rushmer, on any social media platform to find out more.